Okay, so we're at step two, and what step two is about is is to take this y of s, which is the solution to the initial value problem in the Laplace domain, and coax it back into the t domain by trying to get the terms in y of s to look as much like the table as humanly possible. So the way I organize this is by looking at the terms that are added together and just give them indexed names so that this is y1 of s, and this is y2 of s. Because I know that the Laplace transforms an integral, and as an integral, when I try to integrate over some sums, it'll break up those sums, so I just have to deal with each term, which is added together in this sum. So, the first guy, y1 of s is equal to 6s minus 3 over 3s squared plus 27. What we want to remember here is that these, this term is from the initial conditions, and so it should look like the homogeneous solution, at least in terms of its functional form. And so I should be looking for sines and cosines here. Looking at this denominator, this almost looks like numbers... 13 and 14 from the table. The problem is, is that there's a 3 multiplying onto the s squared term. Well, that's not a big deal. We're going to take that 3 off. And in fact, there's a 3 in the numerator too. So I'll take a 3 out of the numerator just for simplification purposes, leaving behind a 2s minus 1. And then in the denominator, I'll take a 3 off of its um, terms. And so leaving behind a s squared plus 9. Those 3s cancel. And so really y1 of s is 2s over s squared plus 9 minus 1 over s squared plus 9. This first term here, this totally looks like table entry number 13. And so I'm already seeing that this looks like 2 times cosine of 3t. This term... The second of the two terms looks like number 14, but is missing a 3 in the numerator. So let's just put that 3 back in by multiplying this whole thing by 3 over 3. So what is this? This is 2 times s over s squared plus 9 minus, we'll keep one of the 3s in the 3 over 3 term in the numerator, and then I'll leave a 3 in the denominator hanging out front. So this is 1 third times 3 over s squared plus 9. And now that is looking much more like table entry number 14. These two are ready to go. The real tricky part, in, or not the real tricky, but the tricky part in this problem is to deal with the y2 of s term. The first thing that we want to remember whenever dealing with, whenever we're dealing with exponentials in the Laplace side is to take the exponential term out front. What do I mean by that? I mean factor that e to the negative 5s so that's out in front of everything. And what is the everything? It's an s over, well, I recognize an s squared plus 9, but now after the work that we've just done, we realize there's another s squared plus 9 hanging out, right? As long as I factor a 3 out of it. So what I have here just to clean it up a bit, is a one-third times an e to the negative 5s times an s over s squared plus 9 quantity squared. So, let's think about expectations. 
if Y1 of S has to deal with the initial conditions, Y2 of S really comes about because of the external forcing function. That external forcing function we saw was uh, a sinusoid on the resonant frequency. It was just delayed five seconds, or whatever the unit of time is here, before it would turn on. When it turns on, I expect to see... Um, oscillations of growing amplitude, resonant phenomenon in this mass spring system. But there are two things that really need dealt with. The first is, what is this S over S squared plus, no, plus 9, that whole quantity squared, the S squared plus 9, and then how to deal with this. Right. So this ter these terms are ready, but we will need to work through a little bit on um, how they correspond to time functions, and that's step three. Okay, here we are at step three, and at step three, what do we want to do? We want to invert everything, so y of t, you are going to be equal to the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y of s. But that is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y1 plus the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y2. Okay. Well, what is the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y1? That is going to be the inverse Laplace transform of 2 times S over S squared plus 9 minus 1 third times 3 over s squared plus 9. And then I'm going to add to that the inverse Laplace transform of y2, which I'm just going to leave hanging out for right now. So what is all this stuff? Can we make moves on it? Well, yes, we can. We can use table entries number 14 or 13 and 14 to find that... This term right here, done by table entry number 13, the first of my terms is 2 times cosine of 3t. And then the second term here is done by table entry number 14. And that is going to be minus 1 third times the sine of 3t. And then I add all this to the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y2. So, what do we need to do to figure out the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y2? That's really the rub. Really, we should have done it before. We had all this space up here to do it before. And we'll do that now. I wanted to hold off so that we can see how everything's fitting together and we have everything dealt with except for this one pesky transform. And so, working this transform up here, we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y2. But that's going to be one third times the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative 5s times s over s squared plus 9 quantity squared. All right, how do we handle this? We expect it to be the resonant function. And so I could go onto the Laplace transform list and look around, and I should look for resonant functions. So I should be looking for t multipliers onto the sine and cosine functions. I look at table entry 11, and I look at table entry 22, and I see that table entry 11 and 22 have like an s squared plus k squared, quantity squared in the denominator, but only 22 has an S in the numerator, which is what I have, so I go number 22 here. But at the same time, I have 
this exponential. When I have this exponential in Laplace space, what I want to be thinking about is using table entry number five. When I go to table entry number five, I'm asked to identify an f of s. So all of this other resonance stuff that we've been poking around with, that's my f of s. And then from this exponential, what I want to find out is what's my a, and my a is equal to five. So when I invert this, this is going to be one third times u of t minus five. which is a statement coming back from a Laplace side saying, whatever's going on with this function in the time domain, it must wait five seconds before it does anything. And then I must take and introduce here an f of t minus a. Well, what is f of t minus a? How do I figure that out? Well, f of t minus a, if capital F of s is given right here, then little f of t must be equal to, according to table entry number 22, t over 2 times k, but my k is 3, times the sine of 3t. So now that we know little f of t, we can write down little f of t minus a, our a in this case is 5, so I get 1 third times u of t minus 5. Now here's my f of t, right? I know that, but now everywhere I see a t in f of t, I have to shift those 5 units to the right on the t-axis as well. So I get t minus 5 over 6 times the sine of 3 times t minus 5. Reinjecting this back into the form for y of t, I have 2 cos 3t minus 1 third sine 3t from before plus um, 1 18th ut minus 5 times t minus 5 times the sine of 3 quantity t minus 5. If we want, we can transform this into a piecewise function. And what we find is that the function is 2 cos 3t minus 1 third sine 3t for a time greater than zero but less than um, five seconds. And then for all time values that are greater than or equal to five, I have the same function, two cos three t minus one third sine three t. But then I add on to that, I add on 18 times t minus 5 times the sine of 3 times t minus 5. And so that is for all t values greater than or equal to 5. So what has happened is that after 5 seconds, a new term shows up, and that new term is um, a resonant dynamic after t equal 5. Okay, and so that is how we use um, Laplace transforms for mass spring problems with step functions guiding external forces to turn on or maybe turn off. In this case, we turned on um, a sinusoidal force, and that sinusoidal force happened to be at the resonant frequency. And so what that means is that after that function turns on, a resonance happens. But what's really interesting about this resonance is that everything has been shifted five seconds in time so that it's just laying in wait. 
when that function turns on, that dynamic will turn on as well.